everybody. I'm Jonelle Kelly from the Pickers Palace in Florence, Texas. And I am really excited to be back on the Primo Redesign page with a bunch of projects that I'm so, so excited to share. These are small projects with big results. So today we're gonna work on a couple of different things. We're gonna focus on decoupage and transfers, my favorite things to play with right now. Now, while you're watching, if you have any questions, you just drop them here in this thread. My husband, Steve, is behind the camera for me tonight and he can't read the little writing. So we're gonna come back after we're done visiting and we're gonna answer any questions. You can also DM me, I think my name's in the link. Catch me there on Facebook on thepickerspalace.com and I'll be happy to help with any questions. So now that I've said that, let's dig in and take a look at some small projects that I think are gonna be fun for you. Here's the thing, right now, we're coming into a great gift giving season. You're probably getting ready for craft shows if you're reselling, and uh, you've got a vintage booth perhaps that's, that's always got a demand for small things that are gonna be quick sellers. Any of these projects would be perfect for that kind of thing. So, here's my first project. And this one's got kind of a backstory for you. I love vintage. I was in the vintage business for 10 years with two stores in Phoenix. So old dirty things catch my eye. And recently I found a bunch of treasures like this. It's an old header piece and you can see this thing is filthy. White lightning to the rescue, it cleans up the wood. But I love these kinds of pieces to transform. I recently did one that you can see pictures on my, my Facebook page that is in my bathroom. It's a header above a, a valance, actually, above a window. Turned out great, I've got bird transfers. But these have beautiful spaces that we can put decoupage or transfers and make them spectacular. So we're gonna move this heavy, dirty thing out of our way for now, and I'll show you the one I've been working on because it's got the best spot for decoupage. Here's the natural wood on the back. You kind of see where I started. And I put a quick coat of paint the other day. And I didn't plan on showing you this piece, but I fell in love with it and thought, we've got to talk about it. Look at the cute little flower motif along here. And it's had this area that had an old veneer. It's a disaster. I painted over it because I'm not a patient girl. I wasn't going to take it off. I've kind of chipped out some areas and sanded back to give it a more rustic, fun look. And I decided that we're gonna do our first bit of decoupage with the new marigold paper. This will be like the second or third project I've demonstrated using it because it is such a favorite of mine. It's just beautiful. I love the vintage look. So here's what we're gonna talk about with this. When we're working with decoupage paper, it's really important that you have a base color because it's gonna show through and it changes the finished project, but you also wanna position it. If I started right here, I'm not gonna see any of those beautiful flowers, the yellow ones that kind of make my heart skip a beat. I get little bits and pieces of the smaller flowers. So I'm gonna keep adjusting and turning this. It doesn't even have to be straight because I'm gonna maneuver it until I get the flowers I want. And if you look, I can get a good amount of those big, bold yellow flowers right about there. Now, I can cut this out to make it easier. So we'll start with that, do a quick cut around my area, just to give me a little bit less to mess with. Okay, set that aside. Now, for decoupage, by the way, our medium of choice Prima Redesign has a great textile media or, uh, medium that's for decoupage. I use Dixie Belle Satin Clear Coat. Uh, it comes in uh, flat and gloss also. I always use just an old chip brush. I'm not gonna use my favorite brushes on uh, this kind of thing. I just, anything will work, so you don't have to worry about a great brush. Just a simple brush. Lay down a coat of your medium. And then we're gonna come back here with our mulberry paper. The mulberry is a great paper because it's so strong. I've also been working with rice and 
we certainly have some beautiful rice papers right now, but I gotta tell you, I'm a, I'm a rough girl, so <laughs> I like the ones I can't destroy as easy. It doesn't tear when I'm playing with it. And let's get these flowers back on here the way we had them. Trying to maneuver them the best we can to get a lot of the flowers. Little bits and pieces of that yellow bursting through is perfect. Smoothing it down, I've always got my hands in things. If not, you can use your uh, something else, a burnisher or a straight edge of whatever. Get that on there, and then we're gonna just put the clear coat right over it, and we're gonna let it dry. We'll see how this does while we're uh, visiting with some other projects, but that is decoupage in a nutshell. It's that easy. So we're gonna set this piece aside and let it dry, and that's gonna give me a chance to talk to you about my lessons for today that I learned more on decoupage. This was a project I was thinking about working on, and I learned two things. By the way, this is using um, Lavender Floor, another one in our new collection from Prima Redesign. We'll get that out of here, and I'll show you the lessons I learned on this piece, because it's what not to do. First of all, actually not a what not to do on this case, it was something I thought was really neat to work on. I've got slats here, and I got this piece on, and I thought, well, heck, how am I going to neatly uh, do this? I put it on in one piece, and I plan to do exactly what I've done, come back and open it up. You can see here. I used a, a straight edge to come through and just cut it, and then I thought, okay, so how now do I get the, the edges down with the paper? I could have certainly just done each slat individually, but I wanted the pattern continuous. Here's what I learned today. While it was still damp, all I did is come into this piece with my sanding pad. This is just a sanding pad from Dixie Bell. And while it was damp, I went across this edge and I sanded it down and it literally folded under on both sides and it created the most perfect edge. And then all I had to do was come back in with my decoupage medium and seal it again. Now, this is dry, but you can still see a bit of it. The paper is so perfect. Now you see how that just folded it under. Again, a little decoupage and that is going to be perfect. So that's my tip. Here's my other lesson actually that I'll share with you. On this one, I thought that I would dry this really quick so that I could demonstrate how to on the other side. So I got my heating gun out and I decided I was going to dry it really fast. That was my don't do this thing today. The heating gun melted <laughs> the paper. So I've got big burns on this side. So we're gonna put that away and I'm gonna use that as don't do what Joan Hell does. How's that for a lesson for today? Two lessons there. All right, so here's our next fun thing while well, that's dry. I told you we're gonna come at these real quick because I've got so much to share. That, by the way, can be any, any vintage piece, little spaces. Look for things that are just small and interesting. You can upcycle them with decoupage so easily. This is the project that I've been having so much fun with this week. I've been demoing it all week both in my store and online. It's a glass block that I picked up for $11.99 at Hobby Lobby. And I know you've probably seen these before. In the past, we've had to drill out the backs with a diamond bit, but this one is actually built so that it's ready to add lights or whatever you want to put inside. It doesn't have to be lights. You've got lots of fun things that you can come up with to decorate the inside of it. But for our purposes, we're gonna put a light in it today. And on this one, I'm gonna introduce you to the VIP transfer. Blossom Botanica is the VIP transfer from Redesign and we are one of the VIP retailers. There's a list also of other VIP retailers on the Prima site that you can find. So you'll only find the Blossom Botanica transfers and the Blossoming Spring Mold from us. Kind of a fun piece. I love this, it's got beautiful, beautiful flowers, I think they're cherry blossoms, and of course the butterfly elements. And I was thinking about what to do with the glass block to show you, and look what I came up with. We'll lay it down here and Steve can come in tight. And we're just gonna use the top piece of this. 
Now you'll notice this has been cut into. You've all done projects where you've got bits of transfers left over. You've done a big dresser or something fun. This is where we get to use up all of those other pieces and it's gonna be stunning. So we're gonna cut our transfer down here. I'm not gonna cut our butterfly. Transferring is easy. We're just gonna get rid of that, that sheet, the carrier page, and we're gonna position this on our clean glass. I wanna get rid of that one cluster because it's kind of gonna be odd if I don't. We may decide to wrap it around, but look, we've got it positioned. We're gonna burnish it down with our paws, make that really nice and easy. You're gonna find that transfers love glass. They glide onto the glass real easy. So you got your transfer tool that's in every single tube you buy. And we're just gonna real quickly burnish this down with our transfer tool. A little bubbly thing there make that go away perfect all gone let's get some of that leaf into our finished piece okay when i get to an edge like this that i did i can come back and finish cutting it i just go real hard and usually when i come to take this off that part doesn't really stick and it's good to go this if you wanted to could wrap around and it might be really pretty on the side I can always come back and add that, but let's see how we're doing getting this one to release for us. Yep, it's coming off. There we go. That one's not releasing because it's not releasing from the top part of it. There we go. got it working. Look at that. Tease it up a bit. Okay, I'm going to bring this a little closer to me so you might not see all of it, but I'm not tall enough to reach out there like that. There we go. Starting to come off beautifully. Love the colors on it, so soft and peaceful. Cherry blossoms are just always gorgeous, no matter what they're on. All right, let's see how this is releasing. We're gonna pop that design and not let it stay down so we can come back later. Here we are. And at the top, look at that. So we'll set that aside so we don't waste that one bit we can put on later. Here we go, I'm gonna use my hands and I'll come back in a bit and I'm going to make sure that I get all of those edges nice and burnished down. But for now, I want to show you those lights that I've been referring to because they're my favorite part of all of this. Okay, so now you see the cherry blossoms on there. It's kind of pretty, but when we get the lights in, oh wow. So real quickly, we're going to turn it upside down, pop that cap and just drop these in really randomly. I bought the longest light chain I could find that was like $5, goes through the lid, cap goes back on. Check that out, everybody. Isn't that fun? Okay, I've got to tell you, I was going to, uh, I was going to give these as gifts, but I can't decide yet <laughs> because every one I make is prettier than the last. So again, glass glass cubes, they are from Hobby Lobby, $11.99, five more bucks for the light. And this is just a bit of the VIP Blossom Botanica transfer. Now, come back to it, add more transfers all the way around into the back, and you're going to have a stunning, stunning piece. Okay, so we're going to set this beauty aside for a minute. Oh, we could add butterflies too. And now I want to show the project that I'm probably most excited about. Uh, let me start here. You may have seen me showcase, oh, knock that one over, showcase my hearts before. These are hearts from Sinopoly, and I love working with them for a lot of reasons. They're just interesting, but a lot of times I'll use them to practice, 
to improve techniques and sometimes I just turn them over and I'll just paint on them and it it gives me a sort of zen moment. The I Choose Joy is a random stencil I had, but you'll notice that beautiful Blossom Botanica transfer again, the VIP transfer that's on that. This is all decoupage. Isn't that wonderful? That is the prima decoupage. Uh, that paper is called Blush Floral. And then this piece is painted uh, with some soft pink in the background, and we've got a lot of elements here, and that inspired today's project. This is the top piece from the My Heart transfer. This is some of the decoupage paper from last season. And then these beautiful butterflies here are stamped from the Monarch collection that I've done with some embossing powder and redesign ink. So we'll take a look at some of these elements and how we put it together for a real fun project. So let's take a look at the back. This is a blank heart, the 24 inch, much bigger than those, they're 18 inch. And this is the base for the project we're gonna do today. In the essence of time, I went ahead and prepared the board and painted it because when I started out, I had a vision very similar to the one behind me. And then I started to kind of have a change of heart and got a new idea. I always say as an artist that you let the project tell you what it's gonna be. And sometimes art will just take you in directions you didn't expect. So here's another one of my hearts that I was working on. And we were going to do something like this. This is a wedding gift that one of my daughters is bringing to a May wedding for her best friends. And you can see again, lots of elements. This is all from Prima stuff, decoupage paper in a couple of spots. This is stick and style. And again, those beautiful Monarch stamps the butterfly stamps from the Monarch collection. So we've got a lot of elements that all come together and a space here for the bride and groom's names or dates. We haven't decided. So we were going that direction, another look. Had it all prepared, but I changed my mind. So here's today's project, everybody. Let's take a look. Well, you can see where I started. Again, that beautiful blush floral decoupage paper. It's on there and dry because I left this one air dry, not the dry, not the heater, right? No uh, air guns on that. This is a fabulous stamp. I, I couldn't resist playing with. It's actually a stencil. These are available at bohocraftco.com. Isn't this wonderful? Check that out. It's very retro. It's just an assortment of little flowers. It made me think very 1970s. It's a six by six stencil, so I did it in a couple of spots. That might reappear in some other places on this one. We'll see how it goes. I love using all kinds of elements, but here's where it took a twist. Today I was working on something and came across Lush Floral. And Lush Floral is a massive transfer collection. It's got six sheets and these flowers are big. I think I put that grouping here, look at this. They are all big flowers. You've probably seen some of our brand ambassadors working with it. It goes on furniture and it's amazing, big, big, big. But I thought, how can I use the smaller elements? Well, that didn't come to mind, so here's what I did. I came up with an idea and we're gonna try this and we're gonna use the biggest flower in the biggest collection on this piece. It's a two-piece flower that sits like this and it's gonna take up the lion's share of the bottom of our heart, but I think it's gonna be amazing because it also kind of shapes out like the heart. So we're gonna apply this transfer in two pieces. And then up here, we're gonna talk about how to finish it with other elements very similar to these. And I think not only are we gonna have a beautiful project, but it's gonna be fun and challenging as an artist. And you can make it as grand and complex as you want, or if you just wanna do something quick and simple, you just saw that this beautiful transfer can be all you need. So let's see how this goes. All right, so here's what we wanna do. We know that we're gonna bring this down and we're not gonna use that element and we're gonna lose some of this. That's okay, I'm all right with all of that. So here I'm going to position it as low as I want 
right about there because I want to get most of that rose into my piece. How's that? Now, I want to get rid of all of this excess real quick because I don't want to mess with it and I don't want it in my way. So we're just going to quickly drop that out. You're now watching a left-handed person go cutting sideways from the right. But I did it. And let's make sure that we don't have that in our way. We'll set that aside because I use every single piece I can find. So we'll come back and use that somewhere else another time. Okay. Now, getting rid of that carrier sheet. And we want to be really careful that we get this positioned back where we want it before we let it touch down because otherwise it gets kind of ugly. And I think we're going to go there. And then you sometimes just pray a bit in your head and think, I hope I did that right. All right. Smooth it out. Now, these bits of transfer here, they can wrap if you want. I do that a lot just because I find it kind of interesting. That's a personal choice as an artist. I'll say that a lot too. So now that we've got this on there, we're gonna just go ahead and we're going to rub our transfer and get it to release onto our board. I've got these uh, natural design elements here where that's got the lines in the board. I'm gonna just let those transfers work their way in there as I get to them. And when it's finished, I will probably break that open and let that crack show because again, I like that element. Those are those artistic moments. Do you do it or not? How are we doing so far? Ooh, this is gonna be easy. Look at that. Nice. Prima transfers are wonderful. They release easily. And I'm even stretching to reach for it. <laughs> okay, there we go. She's coming off nice and easy. If you're doing this and you're starting to tease it up and release it and part of the transfer doesn't release, easy peasy. You just drop that paper back down again and rub it a little more and it'll go. You'll notice that when I get to these edges where I've still got transfer, I kind of come along the edge with the side of my tool. That breaks the transfer and you'll notice it gave it a perfect Perfect release there. Perfect, perfect. Little trick from doing this a bazillion times. Oops, right there is a piece that didn't release. Look at that. We set it back down. Kept going. And come along this edge. And look at that. See? Nice clean edge there. it laying it back down we're gonna make that work it's gonna to bend to my will okay and now I'm gonna come this way because I just want to make sure I get it all right and we don't pick it up and lose that element over here is it releasing for me yes it is all right the first part of it is down kind of looks strange there because you don't quite get what it is visually now the tricky part is the other piece. And this is where I kind of go, okay, let's do this. Let's do this right. Because now what we've got to do is we've got to line it up. And um, that's, that's a little harder than it sounds sometimes. But I think we've got this. So I don't want to clutter it with all these other elements. That's going to be stuff that we're going to cut away right now and save to use for other things. Like I said, you just need to save these somewhere. I always tape, by the way, I'll come back and I'll use painter's tape so that these two, the, the carrier sheet stays with the transfer and that way they don't get messed up. I've learned that the hard way. Lots of neat pieces that we can use separately at another point. See how it separates like that? Again, come back in here later with some painter's tape and tape them together so that you've got those safe and they don't get all dusty and yucky. 
All right. So here's what we're going to attempt to do now. We're going to come in here. We're going to try to line this up so that it visually makes sense. And I think my reference point is going to be the edge of these flowers and then the edge of that leaf. And that way, hopefully, I'm going to overlap them just enough that it looks good and lays down correctly. We've got one shot at getting this right because we don't want it to touch down and get all messed up. So we want to come in tight and overlap it. How's that looking? By the way, that leaf isn't lining up perfect and I'm okay with that. I just don't want it to have a seam. I've done that before and my seam has shown. So I wanna come over it just a bit and cover it so that that seam isn't there. Here we go. I like where it's at and I'm gonna lay it down, rub it out with my hands. Now, this is kind of a neat effect, exactly what I was hoping for. You'll notice that that transfer is coming up on my decoupage, and that's why I got my painting and my decoupage on this side down before you and I got to talk about this, because I wanted to do exactly that and see what happened. Now, we like it, so we're gonna go ahead and get this transfer into play. What do you think so far? Kind of a fun look, isn't it? Another use for these giant overall transfers. Kind of excited by it. I've got a couple of hearts up on my website, thepickerspalace.com. You can also get the Lush Floral Transfer and all of the other Prima transfers there. But this Lush Floral is perfect for these hearts, so definitely consider them. You've got so many different design elements in the, in the collection of Lush Floral that you'll be able to do a bunch of projects. So it's definitely one of those worth the money. Okay, we're gonna have to work this really hard here because we're getting it to release from the other transfer as we go. There we go, we've got it. See, it's starting to roll up. Oh, there we go. More. I am the most impatient person with these. I just want them on there so quick. And it takes some finesse, doesn't it? There we go. Got that piece. Once you start to get individual elements to release, they just roll right off. But definitely when I've layered it down here, transfer on transfer, it takes a little more work. <laughs> That's one of our cats. He's having a conversation with us. How funny is that? Can you hear him in the background? Last time I did a live, I had birds chirping in, in, in the background. Okay, well that is not wanting to go right on that spot. So we're gonna work it a little more. And we might all learn a lesson on finesse here. There we go, see? Coming along. I don't worry about it if it's not going right, I just lay it back down, work it a little bit. You see me get my finger in there and just push it down. Seems like it's just, once I get this spot done where I'm transfer on transfer, I think it's gonna just go like crazy for us. There we are, see? Starting to release all over. This is a big section to go live with, isn't it? We had a good run of it there for about an inch. By the way, if you haven't already found your way to the transfer tools from Prima Redesign, uh, they are quite handy. They have a bigger rubbing surface, whereas this is like three quarters of an inch or something. I think they're a couple inches across on one edge and a little bit longer on the other. Love them. They're easier on the hands. And especially if you have any dexterity issues in your hands, they're kind of ergonomic that way. 
a lot of times that's my go-to because I, if I'm doing a bigger piece like this, this can be a little hard on the hands and uh, I tend to hold my tools, even my paint brushes, like, you know, someone's gonna yank it out of my paw. So it's a good thing for me. It makes me, uh, it makes me relax my hand a little bit. All right, now I'm up here on that section that's on top of the decoupage. We're gonna finesse that down and see how we do with it. Again, saying a little bit of a prayer in my head that that works nicely, because I want you to see it's a great idea. Coming back down here to get it to release. stretch home stretch my friends there it is it's starting to release on my decoupage paper I may have to come in and oh there all I need to do is push it down a little bit and we're gonna want to get some uh, clear coat on that to seal it as soon as we can but it works works nicely. A couple more leaves and elements over here. I'm digging on this already. You can see that flower really is just bold and makes a statement on this card. And it's a great focal point on this piece. And, and by the way, it doesn't have to be a heart. I mean, imagine all of the sign boards you might have that you can take a look at. A lot of times I'll even just buy uh, some of the wood pallet board signs and do things like this because again, it can be a very fast, small project. You can add other elements and other uh, transfers to it and just make it your own. They're easy to do if you're a craft reseller. Uh, sometimes I can buy wood canvases on Amazon or at one of the many craft stores and you get get those painted and then add elements like this and you can incorporate them all in or add stencils into your transfers and make signs with stencils and transfers and beautiful things that are really going to be a fabulous fabulous finished piece all right let's see what we've got going on here how's it going to One leaf does not want to like me today. How's that? Oh, there it is. Okay. Can you tell I'm getting impatient? That's me in a nutshell. Okay. How are we doing now? All right. It's off on our painted areas, but now we got to work these last couple of designs, and we're there. like a little kid getting excited about seeing it all again. Okay, that flower's down, and now we're on that tissue where the, the mulberry tissue and if our experience experiment is going to work. Okay, so we're going to have to get this to release a little bit at a time because it's. By the way, if I had experimented with this ahead on the, the, the decoupage, I might have put down another layer of clear coat to see if that would help it release. But that leaf is giving me trouble and that is not unexpected. Well, there we go. Okay, so yeah, it's coming off, but it needs to be to have something to stick to better. So let's see if we can come in this way. Definitely I'm gonna to wanna to work on that a bit and probably get another set of clear coat on it. But here's what we're gonna do. We're just not gonna mess with that leaf for the moment. I will come back and I'll show you how to solve a problem. 
So we did something that leaves not working. And it was supposed to go on this decoupage paper, but this didn't. But I'm not gonna sweat it, because here's what we'll do. After I'm done, I'm gonna put another clear coat down on my decoupage paper, let it dry thoroughly, and that'll give me a better surface to come back with some of these spare elements and add it in. And you will never know that I was a bust on that one element. I'm not worried about that. That is art in action. Things like that happen. They're gonna happen to you a lot. You're gonna have something that pops up and doesn't work. I've had things break and I miss a gap. I come in and I'll just get some paint and paint them and blend it all in. Transfers don't have to be stressful and they don't have to be crazy. And face it, my friends, art isn't always going to go the way you planned. That's what's so magical about it. Sometimes your biggest mistakes are your biggest joys, and other times they're just crazy. So let's take a look at this and see where we're at. That did exactly what I was hoping. It gave us a beautiful, beautiful focal point. So now we need to come up here. We're going to do a quick bit of sanding with the with the sanding pad. That's how you get these edges finished. I'm going to bring it back this way and see if I can, there we go, I think I can position it. So you can see just a quick bit of sanding here is going to make this paper come off and give us a nice edge. There we go, see? Nice edge on our heart where that tissue was. I never cut that edge, I'm always going to sand it off. Beautiful. So let's talk about the rest of our heart because we've got some fun we can have with it. I'm not going to do it all now because I know you've got other things and I'd rather see you jump online at thepickerspalace.com. See, I'm going to break that down. I love it that way. Jump on thepickerspalace.com and get the Lush Transfer and some of these other fabulous things. But I'm going to give you some more ideas on this that I think will make it fabulous. So let's take a look at some last minute ideas and I want you to find some creative ways. These stamps, fabulous collection of butterfly stamps in the Monarch collection from Prima Redesign. You can put those stamps over here and jazz that thing up. Uh, this is another thing I'm gonna add. This is Jewel Paste. Just got this in, this is Golden Dust. We've got some gold elements here, so I want this to be close. I might come in here and add, it's just liquid sparkle, liquid glitter. I can add some gold over here and let it dry in, maybe even put some gold on top of the gold here and make that really fun. But I'm gonna add little design elements like that. Another idea that I'm kind of excited about is using a piece of my FX trim. I had been looking at this off camera and thinking of painting this to tie the colors in and adding a segment right here, giving us some dimension and depth to the piece. But of course, I could come in any section here and add it, but look at that, that just fits, doesn't it? Let's see, it goes like that. FX can be cut with a straight edge or scissors, it can be painted or stained, I can do anything I want with it, and it's fabulous. It's a silicon made in the USA, available at the Picker's Palace. A great design element to add here. And of course, we still have some butterflies that were on. Where's my butterflies? Ah, here they are. These butterflies. This again is on the uh, Blossom Botanica collection. I'm gonna definitely have to bring some butterflies in here. And I think that we will also take that beautiful stencil and we're gonna bring that stencil out over here. Finally, I want to leave a space to make a note to my gift giver or to do something fun and make it very personal to whoever I'm doing it if I'm going to give it as a gift. But I think adding more of the pink flowers over here is really going to balance this and, and make it all come together. And again, this is at bohocraftco.com. I'll drop some links for you guys later. So you see, this piece, when I'm finished, is going to be absolutely fantastic lush for the win on this. I am in love with this transfer right now because that big bold floral just really came together. And think about this with Mother's Day coming up. What a great present for mom. You give her flowers that are going to last forever. Okay, everybody. Thank you for watching. I'm going to finish these projects up and share them on the pickerspalace.com on Facebook over the next few days. Please drop by my website, thepickerspalace.com 
And my other company is Boho Craft Co., which has got some great products you might not have seen before. Thank you for watching. If you're ever in the Austin, Texas area, our fabulous little store is in Florence, Texas. That's 40 minutes north of Austin. A quick drive, a creative space. I'm always available to help. I love chatting about all of these wonderful things. Drop me a note with questions and definitely look for my next live. We'll be doing something next month, I'm sure. But thank you for joining me today. I'm Jonelle Kelly.